What's the word, y'all? It is so weird to say aloud, but we might have seen the last minutes of Zach Levine as a Chicago Bull. As somebody that has watched him and rooted for him for the last six and a half seasons, I have conflicting feelings about this. Now, trade has not officially gone down. I don't want the people that's not in the know to think that Zach Levine got traded. But, injury update, Zach Levine will require an additional estimated three to four weeks to treat his current right foot inflammation. Now, I'm not here to act like I, I think that Zach Levine doesn't have foot problems. Actually, the last game we did see of him against the Boston Celtics, he left early because of his foot. I'm not saying that he's not dealing with anything, but it is a little bit interesting that this got reported 30 minutes after the Bulls won their third straight game. It feels like no coincidence that two weeks before this, Zach Levine and the Bulls had mutually thought that it was okay for them to kind of look at the trade market. So the team is rolling without him he is a little bit disgruntled it just makes sense to tell him chill until we get get you a trade without saying that publicly i think the real talent thing will be like during this three to four week span will he be traveling with the team will he be on the bench because that would i think that would tell a lot a lot of times obviously if somebody's about to get traded or they're dealing with a high level injury they're not there specifically on the road and stuff so we'll see i mean he has been there for the last couple of games he's actually like he's been engaged on the bench as the team has been rolling so i'm not saying he's out here um rooting for the downfall of his teammates or anything but considering where the bulls are as an organization and where zach levine is as a player i think that the zach levine era is over and I, it just it feels weird man because the zach levine era for his doing or not has been unsuccessful you got to think about it he was one of the main trade pieces of the ultimate trade that set us back right we trade away jimmy butler with the idea of a rebuild we get back larry market and chris dunn and zach levine so he was here year one of our rebuild and he's been here ever since then the team as an organization has done a very poor job of putting together competent teams around him or him being incorporated, whatever. Will the real life good portion of Zach Levine as a as a Chicago Bull is really like a six month span or four month span uh, two years ago when it was him, Lonzo Ball. I, I can't I, can, I ain't got to tell you how good that team was. But the man sat here for six and a half years and basically had one real winning season. I'm saying free Zach Levine from the situation because I think he can provide stuff for a team that can use his service. Before we dive even more into it, I want to let you know that as of right now, this second, this new Enjoy Basketball Drive Drop is live. These hats, these t-shirts, we got hoodies. Very limited. The link is in the description. Now, we have sold out of every single Enjoy Basketball drop that we've had so far. So, I want to say I appreciate y'all even before this goes live um, because it's, it's been a whirlwind to come up with these designs. This is my favorite design we've done. And I know I say that every single time, but that just means that we're getting better with time with our design team and everything. This gives the basketball feel. As you can see at the bottom, it says for the basketball enthusiasts around the world. This hat can go with anything as a new true black and don't even say enjoy basketball maybe you just want to enjoy everything that hat is the way to go we got like models and stuff isn't that crazy we got mod like i'm funding model photo shoots this is the front of the hoodie you see me wear it in a couple videos before um three pieces very limited links is in the description it's also cool because we were shooting like commercials and stuff like come on man we're, shoot we're shooting commercials and stuff this could be you playing basketball on a wet floor in brooklyn <laughs> it's gonna be you anyway let's get back to the zach levine talk because last week i had this conspiracy that i talked about on my podcast speaking of my podcast it is a kenny beachin podcast uh we just dropped a new episode today where we, we ranked the top 10 future teams in the nba i'm just gonna say that link is in the description to that as well but on through the wire what i said in this is that i believe that first the chicago bulls were trying to figure out what the team could potentially look like without Zach Levine because all of the rumors whether it be from Wolds or other people are saying that hey the market for Zach Levine is not as robust as you might think that if they trade Zach Levine they're probably getting back something in exchange that's not necessarily equal to his actual talent teams aren't looking it's a big old contract and people are questioning whether or not Zach Levine is a winning player so boom let's sit down Let's let's see how good we could potentially look without Zach and currently they're on a three-game win streak now some of those is like we went against the Hornets without LaMelo, Mark Williams, and stuff. We went against the Bucks, which I thought was a quality win. And then we went against the Pelicans on the second night of a back-to-back -back without CJ McCollum, without Trey Murphy the third. Like, I'm not acting like this three-game win streak is like, oh my God, here come the Bulls. But a three-game win streak nonetheless. Two of the three games, we played some of our best basketball. We had the most amount of assists in a singular game for the season at like 32. The ball was zipping. People are locking in defensively. It is the best three-game stretch of the entire Bulls season so far. So, boom. If we trade Zach Levine for nothing... This team at least looks competent enough to be competitive, and that was something that we wasn't doing with Zach. But also, I think about it like this. Zach Levine, again, 
almost officially requested a trade. I say almost because his his representation didn't come out and say that. The report was that the Bulls and him mutually agreed to look different ways. Whatever, whatever. Part of it is like, yeah, Zach is dealing with this foot injury, but we'd rather keep him away from playing to a further the injury for him to be traded. But we also might have somewhat of a, a slight verbal agreement with a trade dealing around Zach Levine already. The problem is the sim people can't really get traded until December 15th and January 15th. So right now, as you, if you look at, the, at your watch and your clocks and your, your calendars, we are really, really close to December 15th. Now, if you look at these three to four weeks, it puts us eerily close to January 15th. And that is significant because on Run It Back, Sham said, said this. Yeah, Michelle, Zach Levine, not good for the Bulls, not good for Zach Levine. He will be out another three to four weeks. He's got to treat right foot inflammation. And so he's going to be en ending up missing a total of at least four to five weeks with this injury. Ironically, this takes the Bulls and Zach Levine right up to January, that mm -hmm. mid-January. Shams won't be the one to say that it probably is planned this way. He said, ironically, I don't know if it's ironic. January 15 date when all the free agents will be eligible to be traded from last summer. So when you think about teams like the Lakers, D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, those two guys will both be trade eligible come January 15th. Um, and we, we know what, what this has been. The Lakers six. All right. We, we ain't got to get the rest. Um, I... Do, do not believe that the Lakers should be trading for Zach Levine if it means Rui Hachimura, D'Angelo Russell. Um, that's just my two cents. As a fan of the Bulls, I don't I don't mind it, I guess. Uh, like, I think that as Bulls fans, we have to come to the realization that whatever trade goes down, we're not going to walk away with like, yes, we won! You know, but getting competent role players would probably help. Um, for the Lakers, it, it would be kind of like going back in the opposite direction like the year that they traded for Russell Westbrook. It's like, hey, here's a big name who was an all-star at one point. Let's trade away the depth that we have in order to get him. I just don't know if that's the recipe for the Lakers. I do believe there's a lot left in the tank for Zach. Like the people that question whether or not he can contribute to winning, I think it's a little, just a little bit unfair because he's never been on a team that's been worthy enough to win anything. Right, so if you look at, oh, he only has five playoff games play. Okay, look at the rosters he played for. Before he was in Chicago, he's in Minnesota in the middle of their rebuild. Um, and then he got to Chicago at the beginning of the rebuild, and they were awful. Like, he really only has a handful of playoff games because the Bulls just haven't been able to build a good roster. You know what I'm saying? They also have had to usher him in as the one option, two option, when in reality, he's probably better off as a 2.5 slash three option. Now, the question is, do you want to pay somebody $40 million annually to be your three point, your 2.5, three option? Probably not. So that's what I'm saying. I don't think the trademark is going to be crazy. But when Wode said that there's no trademark, I was like, that's, that's cap, you know? These same questions that people have about Zach Levine, we've seen about other players, and those other players ended up going to better scenarios, better organizations, and say, boom, I'm here. Andrew Wiggins is a good example of this, right? Before he ended up with the Golden State Warriors, he's like, oh, this guy can put up a lot of points, but he don't defend, he don't rebound, he don't pass. Like, is he is he ever going to be more than just a guy that get his own stats? Then he ended up with the Golden State Warriors, and they empowered him to be more than that, and he was an all-star starter, you know? I think Zach Levine can be something like that. Like, he's already made an all-star game, y'all. You know, you feel me? I feel like if we put him in a scenario where he is empowered to, to be the best version of himself and he buys in to being the best version of himself, those questions of can he win, is he a winner, would just be, be gone. Times like this make me want to go load up the trade machine, but God, is this such a hard thing trying to figure out the trades. Like the people that you would expect to maybe want to be interested, you're like, they're not trading this piece, this piece. And then the teams that have, like, dead pieces as far as bad contracts, empty contracts, whatever, why would they be buying? Like, here are all 30 teams in the NBA, right? Um, we gonna go yes or no if they should even be picking up the phone. No, no, probably not. Close to no because they're playing well. Again, they lost two in a row, but... Orlando could use the most scoring, but I don't think they're out there trying to pay him $40 million. You know what I'm saying? 76ers is still a question mark. Now, there, there is some rumors around that. Basically flipping what they got for Harden to get Zach Levine. I don't like the fit too much. The Knicks have already said they're not really interested. The Pacers know the Heat is a question mark as well. They already have Tyler Hero on the team, uh, though he's not playing right now. It feels like overlapping talent, uh, so maybe not. The Cavs know Brooklyn Nets. I don't know what to gauge the Brooklyn Nets. I'm going to say no, but prop, you know what I'm saying? And then these rest of these teams, Atlanta Hawks, no. Raptors, maybe, maybe. We don't know what Masai's thinking. They could use some shooting, some scoring. But then again, Pascal Siaka might be getting moved too, so I don't really know. 
Charlotte, like a Gordon Hayward flip would be interesting, but like, why would they do that right now? Watch to know. Detroit is the most interesting one. They're on an 18-game losing streak. They have to make a decision. They have to do something for the fan base. 18 straight losses. I mean, they've won a total of zero point. This is their win percentage. Like, what? Hello? Um. Anyway, uh, then on the East or Western Conference side, it's like Minnesota, no. OKC, no. Detroit, uh, Denver, no. Dallas, no. L.A., I guess maybe. Sacramento, probably not because they need more defensive-oriented pieces versus offensive-oriented pieces. Suns, no. Pelicans, no. Clippers, no. Rockets, no. Like, where is this man going to get traded? I don't know. But he will get traded. It might be a left-field team. I don't really know. You let me know in the comment section. Uh, do you believe that uh, did we meet, we've seen our last uh, Zach Levine game in Chicago? Because that's what I think. Again, enjoy basketball. Drop is live. The newest episode of Kenny Beach and Podcast is also live. And then we dropped the video earlier this morning where I, I want to try to put together these morning recaps of the previous night. You let me know what you think. I, I went over all 11 games from yesterday. Uh, highlights, funny moments, whatever, whatever. And the goal is to drop those semi-regularly, but specifically in the morning for y'all that's going on y'all commutes to work or going off to school. And you want to catch up what happened in the league. So uh, that also dropped on this channel. If you just, just go take a look. If it ain't for you, it ain't for you. That's fine. But let me know.